This is the ninth in a series of screencasts about reaction dynamics for the module CHE 30042. So today we're going to continue to talk about uh, theories of unimolecular reactions and in particular today we're going to talk about trying to apply Lindemann theory to actually get some numbers out and perhaps make predictions about reactions. So we've already seen uh, what, how, we, how we can use it to um, to explain uh, the pressure dependence of these reactions. And we saw that in the previous screencast. And today we're gonna to try and get some numbers out and see how effective it is at doing that. Okay, so the first thing we can do is we start with our predicted rate equation um, that was given in previous slides. So the last screencast, so this would be screencast eight. I'll just write that there. Um, and that's the rate equation um, according to uh, the Lindemann mechanism. OK, so that's the one we derived last time. OK, and we can actually rewrite this rate equation. Um, you know, basically what we want to do is we want to say, well, um, we've got an effective rate constant and we've got a concentration here of um, species that are reacting. So we can rewrite this out. OK, so we write rate or dp over dt is equal to k1, k2, concentration of m over k minus 2 concentration of m plus k1 okay we'll just make that a bit longer and then that's all multiplied by the concentration of a and you know obviously what we can then do is we can say well this is our observed rate constant okay so in other words rate is equal to k osbs times by concentration of a okay so now we have a new equation which is obviously for k obs I'll say k obs is equal to k1 k2 concentration of m over k minus 2 concentration of m plus k1 okay and this equation here that i'm underlining this one's quite important for the remainder of these slides and we'll come back to this equation on a few occasions okay now what we can do the first thing we can do is we're going to try to draw ourselves a lindemann plot okay now a lindemann plot is a plot of 1 over k obs versus uh, 1 over the concentration of m and if you remember that m that's molecule that's just any molecule okay now what why is this a plot and why is this important well let's have a look at this equation let's let's um let's sort this one out and we'll do just 1 over k obs is therefore equal to and we just essentially flip the equation don't we yeah so we write out k minus 2 concentration of m plus k1 over k1 k2 concentration of m right and we can rewrite that of course and i'll do this now in a slightly different color as equal to k minus 2 so this is 1 over k obs we'll just put a line there is equal to k minus 2 concentration of m over k1 k2 concentration of m and of course those concentration of m's are going to cancel out each other so i'll just erase that and i'll put that line back in right so they cancelled and then we get k1 over k1 k2 concentration of m and again we can do some cancelling here because the k1s are going to cancel right so K1 and K1. And of course, what we can do is just move this line a little bit and we end up with one. OK, so here we have a Y is equal to this is an intercept because these are all constants plus M X. And so our X is going to be this is our X here is one over M and our M our gradient is one over K minus two. Yeah. Oh, no sorry k2 that is isn't it k2 so just to be clear that's k2 yeah all right so that is our lindemann plot and of course from this we can get we can get k2 is equal to 1 over m and we can get this here is 1 over our limiting rate constant at um, you know at, at high pressure so if you remember this this equation up here this will tend at high pressure to go to at high p this goes to rate is equal to k1 k2 
over k minus 2 times by concentration of a, yeah, because the m's are going to cancel, yeah. So this here is our rate constant at high pressure, and this is 1 over our rate constant at high pressure. So we, we can write that the, that the rate constant at high pressure is the infinite rate constant or the limiting constant at high pressure, and again, we'll come back to this term later on. Um, so let's just get an equal, get rid of that equal sign. This is equal to 1 over c okay so that's a key point about these lindemann plots so so you know let's see what happens now can we draw this lindemann plot and does it actually give us a straight line if we plot it like this okay so this is an example question uh that i might ask you either on a problem sheet or maybe in a um oba okay and it just basically gives you some data okay you've got some data here you've got essentially um a concentration of um species so this is concentration of m effectively or concentration of A in this case, or concentration of M. Same difference really, isn't it? And this is our K obs. Yeah. Okay. And we can plot the two. And what we end up with is this. And we, and in this case, we actually do see a straight line. Straight line. Yeah. I'll note that this is not always the case, as I'll show you in a minute. But anyway, we've got a straight line and we've then got an equation up there. Okay. So what can we do? OK, so what two things we term from this plot? Well, it's the two things we already spoke about. So we can say, well, gradient. Um, so M and that's equal to, of course, one over K2. And that gradient is this. Now, we have to be a bit careful here, don't we, with the, with the units, don't we? So we can say the gradient is equal to 0 0.1062. And it's essentially this over this, isn't it? Yeah. So it's 10 to the 5 seconds over 10 to the 5 per molar. And of course, these two 10 to the 5s are going to cancel and it's going to give us 0 0.1062 seconds molar, molar seconds, I suppose. Um, and so therefore, K2 is just equal to the inverse of that, which is uh, 9.4 per second per mole. OK, and that's a sensible unit for the gradient uh, for, for K2, isn't it? Because K2 is a biomedical um, species, uh, biomedical reaction. OK, right. And the other thing we can tell, of course, is the intercept. So again, we've got intercept C is equal to one over that sort of K infinity thing. And so that is equal to um, 0 0.5243. And in this case, it's times 10 to the 5 seconds. Yeah. OK. And of course, um, we can therefore say that um, the high pressure rate constant is equal to 1.9 times 10 to the minus 5 per second. OK, so just to once again, that's the sort of limiting rate constant at high pressure. So that's what that says there. OK. Of course, the issue here is that very few reactions in reality actually show this kind of behavior. And in particular, um, they tend to deviate from the theory that we've talked already, particularly at high pressure. So if you look here at low pressures or high values of P to the minus one, you've got a relatively linear dependency. Um, you know, obviously there's not many data points in this case, but you can kind of see if you drew a line through maybe even seven of these points, you get a relative, you could draw a straight line. But as we go to higher values of the pressure or smaller values of P to the minus one, we get a deviation significantly from that theory. And, and this kind of behavior is far more co common for most reactions. OK. OK, so moving on, can we actually use um, these theories we've been talking about? Can we use them to make any predictions or indeed more appropriately sort of if we do try to make predictions, say, for example, using the tools we've already been developing throughout this course? Um, how close can we actually get to, you know, numbers that are sort of relatively accurate um, and obviously you know you've got a slide in front of you it's got quite a lot of information so there's a, there's a graph here uh, and I'm going to explain what all this means although some of the stuff that you've got on this slide is already familiar to you so for example this equation here this is the um, 
the uh, the high pressure rate constant. So you know high pressure rate constant is k infinity, and that's equal to k1 k2 over k minus two, um, as we've already discussed. Okay, and the, really for this slide, we just want to consider a very special state, and that's where the rate of conversion and deactivation are the same. And if that's the case, then we can basically write out k minus two concentration of a star concentration of m. So that's the rate of uh, our deactivation is the same as the rate of conversion. So that's K1 concentration of A star, yeah? Okay, and obviously we can rearrange that equation to give us um, concentration of M is equal to um, K1 over K minus two. And you've got, uh, you know, these two things here are going to be pulled over too, but they will cancel, of course. Yeah, so our A stars, concentration of A stars are going to cancel. Yeah, so basically concentration of M under these conditions of, you know, the, the rates being the same um, is equal to um, the rate of um, conversion divided by the rate of deactivation. OK, and we're going to describe a, um, you know, a specific case of this. So, you know, and this specific case, this concentration of M at which this is the case is going to be called M a half. And that's obviously related to the thing down here on the slide. Now, why have I written this? Well, that's because if you look at this, we've got K infinity is equal to K1, K2 over K to minus two. So we can say that this is K infinity. So that's K1, K2 over minus two. And that's divided by k2 yeah so we just get rid of k2 yeah so that's the same isn't it so that is equal to k infinity divided by k2 yeah okay so yeah so this this here is the concentration of m this extra species or this general species at which the um, conversion and deactivation states are the same Right. At this point, OK, because you've got the rate of conversion and deactivation are the same, then once you've made once we've made our A star, then, you know, it's either going to go to be converted to products or. Or it can go back to reactants and that's a 50 50 chance. OK, this is a 50 50 chance under these conditions. OK, and if it's a 50 50 chance, then that means that the rate overall rate that's being observed is half that at the um, under the, the sort of the high pressure condition. So this K infinite. So at this point in time, the rate, the observed rate is equal to the rate constant at high pressure. So that limiting infinite rate constant um, divided by two. Yeah, so that's what that's saying. So essentially what we can say is we can draw a graph and uh, we can draw a graph of our um, rate constant versus our concentration of M. And at the place where the rate constant um, is equal to the limiting rate constant divided by two, then we have M to the half. OK, and at that point, then that M to the half is equal to the limiting rate constant divided by K2. OK, so that's what that graph says. And that's sort of explaining all of this. OK, now, of course, we can do this and we can kind of, you know, plot these things and we can measure them experimentally. But equally, we could try to use collision theory, for example, to predict K2, measure K, um, this high um, pressure rate constant um, experimentally and see how close our value of M half is to the reality. OK, and that's what the next slide is going to show. OK, so here we have a table of the experimental values of this M half. OK, so these have been these have been experimentally determined. We've, we've got both K2 and our high pressure K rate constant um, have been experimentally determined. And from that, we found M to the half uh, or M half, as it were. And just to remind you, M half is this specific concentration at which the rate of conversion and deactivation are the same. OK. Um, and we've got in this part of the table here, we've got those that are calculated using the predicted K2. OK, so K infinite still been experimentally found, but we've predicted K2 here. And so these are the results. OK, and you can see here that in all cases, our calculated values 
are many orders of magnitude, apart from maybe this one at the bottom, many orders of magnitude too big. OK, and that means in that case that K2 is being underestimated by the um, by collision theory, essentially. OK, which is a bit unusual, isn't it? Because generally speaking, collision theory tends to overestimate rate constants. Why is this? Well, I think the key point is that the K2 is relating to the generation of excited state, not necessarily a, a reaction as such, um, but more importantly, that these are unimolecular reactions and it's generating a, an energetically excited state. It's basically putting the energy in the right place. That's what it's doing. And, you know, obviously collision theory is much better when we're talking about collisions that then result in obvious reactions and it doesn't really take into account internal energy and so one of the things we're going to be able to do and we're going to talk about amendments in the next screencast one of the things we're going to have to do is take into account the internal energy that molecules already possess and using that we can actually probably improve these theories okay so sort of to sum this all up um, we've got Lindemann mechanism here and we've got the rate law here that I've written out multiple times and the good thing about the Lindemann mechanism is it does sort of qualitatively explain that change in the reaction order with pressure but the problem is is that you know any predictions using this and indeed um, our, even our Lindemann plots are curved so it falls down in many cases particularly the high pressure is a bit of an issue um, in that case OK, and also that we can't really, you know, just using CT alone, so collision theory alone, we can't really predict the rate constants and therefore we can't really use the current theory um, the way it is at the moment to get any accurate um, predictions. OK. And this this example here is the one we've already discussed. So, you know, if we're talking about collision theory for the activation state, we ignore the energy that the molecules always possessed. And of course, they might already have the right amount of energy and it's just in the wrong place. But it could have a probability of ending up in the right place. And that's where we get to Hinsherwood's amendment, which we'll talk about next time.